Good morning to those of you here in church and to those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us at our celebration of the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Today we hear St. Luke's version of the Beatitudes. Because the Beatitudes are so familiar to us, they can lose some of their impact. 
In many ways, they were revolutionary and countercultural teachings in Jesus' day, and they continue to be in our society today. The world tells us that more is better, that winning is everything, and that we should place our needs before others' needs. However, through the Beatitudes, Jesus continues to challenge us to renounce those superficial ideals by surrendering our lives and placing our trust in him. Only then will we achieve true meaning, success, and happiness. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Roberto, and our preacher is Brother Thaddeus. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Again, as you just heard, we hear today the beautiful Beatitudes, the, the formula that Jesus gives to us as Catholics, as Christians, as human beings, to achieve ultimate meaning and happiness in our lives, not by the criteria the world places before us, but by the laws that he has given to us, the invitation he offers to us to enter more fully into life, into love. So let us ask God for that grace, not just when we're here at Mass, but especially in our daily lives, to live according to his precepts, his laws, his invitation to love in our lives. And we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we say the Gloria together, which you can find on the cards in your pews. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. 
And as I say this prayer, I invite each one of us to bring to God all that we have in our hearts, the joys, the hopes, the dreams, the sorrows, the struggles, and place them on this altar as we celebrate Mass. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they, hope in the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. I invite you to sing along with me. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Hear now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And may the word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and ex insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in the same way. The Gospel of the Lord. As you heard before Mass, Brother Thaddeus will be speaking today about uh, the readings, and so when that happens, he will speak after communion, and so we're going to continue with our Mass. But I just want to say a few words because I find these Beatitudes always so powerful, and as you heard at the introduction to the Mass, we've heard, heard them so much that, oh, okay. But really, they are revolutionary statements, and they continue to be in, in our world because they put in, in a, a stark contrast what our world says are the things that we need to, to, to seek after, the values, the criteria of the world, to be rich, to be important, to be powerful, to be influential, to have things. And Jesus, in the Beatitudes and in many of his teachings, tells us the exact opposite. He turns the world's values, the world's criteria on their heads. And he says, no, it's better to be poor. It's better to be meek. It's better to be humble. It's better even to suffer persecution and, and to, to experience the, the things the world considers so bad. And it's not, again, evil is not a good thing. Bad things are not what we should seek in our lives. But what Jesus ultimately is saying is that seek what's inside, what's most important in your lives. It's not that those criteria of the world, those seeking those things is bad, but let us not fool ourselves into thinking that they're going to give us ultimate happiness, ultimate meaning, ultimate success in our lives. He says over and over again that you win in life by losing, by losing your false self, losing, again, these world's values and criteria, letting them go and seeking what is really important. And I'll say just one thing that will drive this home. I've done hundreds, maybe even thousands of funerals, and I would say at 99% of those funerals that I celebrate, the loved ones never say, or, or I should say 99% of the funerals, they will, the, the loved ones will always talk about not so much, oh, my mom or my grandma, or my dad, my grandfather, my loved one, he had so much money, or they were so good looking, or they had the best cars. It's not about that. It's about love. They loved me. They supported me. They forgave me. This person had a heart that was full of love. And so that's ultimately the legacy we leave behind. Not so much, again, the world's criteria. It's what's in our hearts. That's what matters. So let me leave you this question. What do you want people to say about you when you've died? Do you want them to say about how good looking you were, the incredible body you had, the money you had, the clothes you wore, the car you drove? 
Or do you want them to talk about your heart, the kind of person you were? That's what the Beatitudes are all about. And that's what our lives should be all about. Let us now stand and profess our faith in the God who gives us all that we need in this life and more. And we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We trust in the Lord above any other source of help or hope because he alone knows our deepest needs and is able to meet them, we now turn to him with confidence. That Catholics and all Christians would surrender to the Lord and place their trust in him more fully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are poor and those who are hungry, that rich nations would share their resources willingly and respond more generously to their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those filled with sorrow because they have lost loved ones, health, or employment, may they know the presence of God who wipes away all tears and who brings light into every darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are persecuted for fighting against injustice, prejudice, and other evils, may they be strengthened by God and find support to continue their causes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. On this weekend before Valentine's Day, We pray in thanksgiving for all those whose sacrificial and generous love has sustained us in our lives, and we pray that all spouses, partners, and close friends continue to support and honor each other in their relationships. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Mary Aguilar, for the eternal repose of her soul, whom we we remember in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our Book of Intentions and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy God, you bless those who are in distress and reward those who trust in you. As you answer our prayers, keep us faithful in your service. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Dominic, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we stand once again, and we pray in the words that Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Thank you. Now let us turn and carefully offer each other a sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. My brothers and sisters, this is true life. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And once again, we'll say together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated now for Brother Thaddeus' reflection. morning. So, what do you think about suffering? Is suffering something which you avoid at all costs? Is it something that you begrudgingly accept where necessary, but would rather keep at arm's length? Is it something that you feel like you are surrounded by, even drowning within. I do not believe it is controversial to say that everyone has experienced suffering. It comes as certainly as the dusk at the end of the day. To live in this world is to experience pain and, yes, suffering. Our readings today address this very human experience in a radical way. In the passage from Luke's Gospel, we read the Beatitudes, and the Beatitudes contain in them a beautiful reversal of expectations. It is the lowly, the afflicted, the suffering, who are exalted while those who the world looks upon with favor are threatened with woe. In some ways, what our Lord tells us in the Beatitudes is so ingrained in our identity as Christians that it can be difficult to pin down its significance. Yet that significance has everything to do with vindication from and validation of human suffering. This comes into its fullness in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross when he took up in his suffering the sins of the whole world that we might be redeemed to God. And while we can never achieve something as wondrous as this, nonetheless, by the grace of God, we can live a life in imitation of our Lord by offering up our own trials and suffering to God, they can take on a redemptive quality. By offering them to God, we can make of our negative experiences a pleasing sacrifice to God. Not that our suffering pleases God, but that our patient endurance of that suffering for his sake and for the sake of our sins and the sins of others. That is what is pleasing to God. And in fostering the outlook that our suffering has purpose, that is a part of the saving work of our church and of your personal redemption, then we infuse it with meaning and by the grace of God can endure it gracefully and even with a certain joy. Saint Cardinal John Henry Newman once wrote in one of his homilies, a saint very dear to my heart, that King Solomon was in so many ways like Jesus. Of course, Solomon wasn't God, but in his humanity, he was very near perfection. So says the blessed saint. He was a man of vast wisdom, yet he lacked one critical thing. He lacked suffering. And because he lacked suffering, the many graces that God had bestowed upon this son of David were squandered. Solomon turned away from God, 
worshipping foreign gods and marrying many women and taking on concubines. In a word, he failed to live up to his great gifts because he never learned to suffer and the lessons that suffering well can teach us, including giving due value to the good things that God had given him. It is hard, perhaps even impossible, to see beyond our own horizons. Even the great wisdom of Solomon could be spoiled, eclipsed by a life which knew no pain. He was never refined like silver in the furnace, and so when trial came, he fell away. Now all that being said, there is no need to seek out suffering, nor yearn for it. It will come in its own time. Rather, thank God for those peaceful times when you are free of suffering. But it is important to look on those times of suffering with the eyes of Christ. Suffering presents us an opportunity to grow. Let me give you an example from my own life. When I was a novice, that is the first year you spend as a Dominican brother, I had a number of trials I needed to face. By the design of the novice year, it is almost inevitable. There I was, living in close proximity with a bunch of men I did not know, my brother novices, none of whom I chose to live with, and we together were being introduced to this new thing called religious life. That is not always an easy transition. It was often painful. And it was often painful precisely because I was living in close proximity to people who were all but strangers to me. And well, yes, we were all Christians trying to follow our Lord. The cracks begin to show when you are spending all day, every day, in close proximity beside each other. They were not going to put up with my whining, nor sense of self-importance, my immaturity, nor my attachment to my flesh, in short. And I thank God that they didn't. The hardest part of that year was facing my own inhumanity, and that is a painful process, but a necessary one to follow after Christ. That year made me a better disciple of our Lord and a better man precisely because it was painful. Our readings today likewise warn us of approaching suffering in a way of the world, trusting in men and possessions. The prophet Jeremiah, never to mince words, expresses this in a most powerful way. Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. Strong words, but words we need to hear. There is an understandable tendency to avoid suffering and even a place for this. There is no need to suffer needlessly after all. Yet, we must be careful not to make idols of the things which offer us relief from suffering, whether this be wealth or power or reputation or whatever other things the world can offer. For when we put our trust in these things and not in God, we make a grave error. It is when we do this that we begin to turn away from God, preferring to trust in the frailty of the flesh rather than the great power of our Lord. And so, it is good to be on the watch within ourselves, to see where our hope clings. Is it in passing worldly things, or is it in God? And when you must face suffering, do you learn from it? Or does nothing change in your heart? I ask you all here to reflect upon your relationship with suffering as you depart from Mass today. 
Perhaps you will discover a doorway thus far closed that leads to God. Perhaps you will find that there is great beauty even in the pain. You can be seated for our announcements. Thank you, Brother Thaddeus, for your very, very insightful reflections. Uh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, as we all know, the day of love, and so I'm going to offer an opportunity for those of you who would like to renew your vows. So I invite those who are here, whether you're here by yourself and your spouse is not here or whatever, those of you who are watching online as well, I invite you to stand and to face your spouse, your partner, and to renew your commitment with each other as we come together today. Um, in this way, you'll be strengthened to keep mutual and lasting fidelity with each other and carry out the duties of marriage. So I invite you to face each other, to join your hands, and to repeat after me. First, I invite the husbands to repeat after me. I give thanks to God for you and for our marriage. And once again, I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. And now I invite wives to look at your husbands and repeat after me. I give thanks to God for you and for our marriage. And once again, I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. May Almighty God reconfirm your hearts in the bond of love. May your family bring you happiness, and may your generous love be returned to you many times over. May the peace of Christ live always in your hearts and in your home. May the Lord bless you with many more years of happiness. And I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A round of applause for our couples. God bless you. And I invite you to be seated as I continue with our announcements today. The St. Dominic's Men's Retreat is coming up next month, March 11th to 13th, at Mater Dolorosa Retreat Center. Information can be found in the bulletin. Again, men, I really encourage you to set aside this weekend to take a deeper step, as Brother Thaddeus said, to look at even our suffering in our lives as part of God's way to mold us. And so the suffering of giving up a whole weekend to the Lord. So please think about that. And then uh, every year, Archbishop Gomez asks all Catholics to participate in the Together in Mission annual appeal, which is specifically designed to help the poorer parishes and schools in our Catholic Archdiocese. So please come. Commitment Sunday is two weeks from today, February 27th, and it will be uh, an important time for us, not just to give a one-time little donation, but to make a pledge. This is a, a real important offering to help those poorer Catholics in the Archdiocese. St. Dominic's will be sponsoring a special one-day conference entitled Healing Your Family Tree, and so you're invited to come. And it will take place on Saturday, February 27th from, I think it's 10 to 4, something like that. There, uh, the conference is free for St. Dominic's parishioners. There will be people coming from all over Southern California beyond for this conference. It's very popular and very powerful. But in order to attend the conference, you have to register ahead of time online, and they will give you some information that will be used at that conference. Really, really a very, very powerful experience. So please, there are... Uh, flyers in the vestibule of the church as well as in the parish office. So please take a flyer and register online ahead of time. 
Now, next Sunday, Archbishop Gomez, Bishop Aklan, our regional bishop, Bishop Wilkerson, who's the former regional bishop, and 20 Dominican sisters who were principals at our school and friars who were assigned here at St. Dominic's in the past will be with us to celebrate our centennial mass next Sunday at 10 a.m. And there will be a Saturday vigil mass the night before at 5 o'clock as always. But on next Sunday, there's not going to be any other mass except for this bilingual mass, English and Spanish, with Archbishop Gomez and all those others that I mentioned. So please come and join us for that mass today and come early. There's no tickets needed, but it's first come, first serve. And we only have so much space in the church. We're going to have an overflow in the Scanlon Center upstairs where there'll be a screen and we'll live stream the mass. But if you want a seat, you better come early. And uh, after the Mass, we'll have a luncheon. All the tickets have been sold for the luncheon. And so, unfortunately, you can't get in if you haven't already purchased a ticket. But, again, you can come to the Mass without worrying about a ticket. But there are requirements. You have to show proof of vaccination, etc. And there's a special flyer that will be handed out to you by our ushers this morning that explain all those guidelines, what you need to do to come to Mass and to the luncheon if you have a ticket. There's a diagram of a parking map because parking is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have valet parking because there are going to be so many people. So please take that flyer home with you and uh, look at it so you'll be prepared next Sunday for that Mass and the luncheon if you have a ticket. It's going to be a great experience. So thank you so much, as always, for coming to our Mass today. Thanks to all of our servers, our, our ministers, for your generous service week after week. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives.